Located 77 kilometers off the coast of Louisiana, the huge floating drilling rig called the Deepwater Horizon had just completed drilling an ultra-deep well. The bottom of the well was five and a half kilometers below sea level. On the 20th of April 2010, the Macondo blowout in the Gulf of Mexico became the biggest oil spill in US history. Five million barrels of oil is the rough estimate, about 20 times the size of the Exxon Valdez oil spill in Alaska in 1989. Apart from being an environmental catastrophe, the Macondo was also a human disaster with 11 people killed. The real causes of the accident are the human and organisational factors which we find at work in many other big accidents. The best way to look at these causes is to start with a Swiss cheese model that we've all seen before. BP itself used this kind of analysis to explain the accident. It's a very useful way of looking at accidents. In this program, we'll identify a few of the barriers that failed, but more importantly, we will look at the human and organisational causes of these barrier failures. The first failure was the cement job. The bottom of the well was supposed to be cemented in to prevent oil and gas getting into the well, but the cement job was not effective. The crew carried out a procedure designed to test the integrity of the cement. The results of the test showed very clearly that the well was not properly sealed, that the cement job had failed, but the results were misinterpreted and the test was declared a success. Finally. The drillers were supposed to be monitoring the well to the very end of the process, but they failed to do so. Let's look at another barrier that failed. This was the failure of pressure testing. They had finished the job and they needed to test whether the cement in place was holding. The way you do this is by temporarily reducing the pressure in the well to see what happens. If the cement has sealed the well properly, nothing will happen. But if the cement job has not worked and you reduce the pressure at the top, the oil and gas will come in at the bottom of the well and the pressure reading you see at the top will start to rise. What happened when they carried out the test was that the pressure began to rise, which was a clear indication, unmistakable, unambiguous, that the well was not sealed. But the people conducting the test could not accept that this was the case. The next major gap in BP's safety strategy was that the HSE staff was very much focused on occupational safety. Their view was that process safety was not part of their job. One of these HSE managers was asked at interview, well, what about major hazards? Who's responsible for that? If you're not responsible, who is? His answer was, the engineering authorities or the technical authorities within the company are responsible for major hazards. The problem with that answer is that process safety, major hazard safety, is more than engineering. Of course, the engineering authorities are responsible for ensuring that engineering designs are good designs, that the engineering is quality engineering. But there is more to process safety than engineering. There is also the behaviour of the people who are managing those major hazards. Major hazard safety depends upon the frontline operators complying with the procedures which are designed to control those major hazards. This is not the responsibility of the engineering authorities or the technical authorities. There was nobody in BP with a particular responsibility for that. The behaviour of operators in relation to major hazards was uncontrolled and unaudited and not subject to any kind of scrutiny. In other words, there was no behavioural safety focus on major hazard risk. BP had good behavioural safety programs in relation to personal safety. What they needed to do was to realise that behavioural safety programs are relevant for major hazards too and must be applied to major hazards as well as to conventional hazards. This was a huge gap in BP's approach to safety. They were not looking at the behaviour of people which is relevant to major accidents. 
So it was that there was no scrutiny of what the people doing the well integrity test were actually doing. No independent verification that they knew what they were doing or that they were complying with relevant procedures in carrying out that test. There was just a general assumption that they could be left to themselves.